Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're very happy that you're here with us. A uh, couple of announcements to make before I introduce the mayor. My name is uh, Pat Montoya. I'm the director for the Department of Municipal Development. We will manage the project on behalf of the city through our department. In just a couple of minutes, I will introduce the project managers and the uh, two individuals that were instrumental in making this happen. Uh, again, we, we do want to thank you. Uh, the construction of the site itself uh, is based on a lot of factors. And one is that the Albuquerque metro area sees about 25% of all traffic in the state. And we're growing, as you well know. This makes the Regional Transportation Management Center critical in assisting motorists. We want to thank WS Global Incorporated, Bridgers and Paxton Consulting. We'd like to thank Studio Southwest Architects, and especially Aaron Erlinger and Smart City Traffic LLC. And then on behalf of the department, I want to thank uh, two individuals that are very instrumental. Uh, Jerry Francis, I just saw him back here, who will be the project manager. He will be on site for a considerable amount of the time. And then Debbie Bauman, who was instrumental in the grant application and making all of this happen. So we want to thank both of you very much. Uh, not here this afternoon are Jim Hamill and Melissa Lazoya. Uh, they took a great part in making this happen as well. I also want to recognize the COO before I introduce the mayor, Lawrence Rael, who was with COG for a good portion of time, came back as the COO for the city. We're quite happy that he's with us and the support that he's providing to, uh, to this project. With that, uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce a strong supporter of the project, uh, one that is, truly believes in Albuquerque and its future, and this is the future of Albuquerque. Mayor Keller. Well, good afternoon. Appreciate everyone coming out today. Uh, and especially our partners. I know uh, it actually is a site that we don't always see and we talk about how we need to cooperate and work together and I think just the folks behind me are uh, really exemplify this concept and how we are coming together as a community as one Albuquerque regardless of whether we're the county or the cog or whatever and saying we've got to deal in a better way with our traffic problem. So. I want to share with you this concept, which I think we're going to dive into in a little bit more detail. But the notion of a centralized traffic management center is what we're here to talk about today, which of course will take place right here in this building. You can see some of the visuals of what this is going to look like. But the idea right now, if you think of those signs uh, above the highways that NMDOT works on, they're not always connected to what's happening at the county in Albuquerque. Or if we think of the delays that we see, the long trucks back there, for whatever's happening, whether it's construction or an accident on the freeway, how do we actually plan out alternative routes in a way that is fast and rapid? That's what we're going to be able to do in this center. So this is something, of course, that many cities face, traffic problems. We're all familiar with our orange barrels. Um, but it's something also that we've learned from other cities. The way you can actually deal with this in the short term is to have a regional coordination center. And that's what this is all about. So I want to highlight where things are at now. This is where uh, this map here, we right now have four different essentially command centers that are in place for different agencies. These are all going to move and be centralized out of this facility. And that's what's going to make this work a whole lot better for our community. Because if you're sitting in traffic, you don't really care if it's NMDOT or if it's APD or whatever the city or government entity that's causing the traffic or needs to work on the traffic. You just want it helped. And that's what we're going to be able to do here. So our plan is to create a new regional traffic management center that bridges the largest transportation and law enforcement agencies in central New Mexico into one room and also streamline emergency responses. Now, we've issued a request for proposals to renovate uh, this building here, the old National Guard Armory, of course, in my old state senate district here in the International District, to make this a state-of-the-art traffic management center. Now, our partners and the other agencies are going to speak a little bit more about this next. But I also want to acknowledge it's summertime. And summertime in Albuquerque means a lot of different things. It means the heat. It means a lot of fun, uh, a lot of our summer programs and so forth. But it also means a whole lot of construction. 
And folks always ask, you know, like, why is there so much construction over summer? Well, there's a lot of good reasons for that. There's actually less traffic because school is out, and so that's why we tend to do construction in the summer. Also, weather, right, is probably the biggest reason. And so we do this on purpose. It's not by accident, and believe it or not, it's a whole lot better than having all this construction during the school year or in the middle of winter when it goes a lot slower and often has to be redone. Now, I also want to highlight, uh, as a community, we're not uh, here to illustrate all the numerous differences, but if you have con questions around construction that's on the freeway, that's really a good question for the state. Obviously, the county and the city take care of the other construction projects primarily. But we're going to be able to talk to each other in real time in terms of how we coordinate this. So what we're trying to do at the city also to reduce traffic is uh, control what we're doing with respect to traffic management. And so today we are also announcing the following policies that are going to help deal with those two things, our orange barrels in our city. So <clears throat> going forward, all barricades and orange barrels must be removed before rush hour for any work lasting longer than one day or less when possible. This is actually a policy we started back in the 90s that Lawrence Rail put in place when he was in at the city. We're bringing it back because one of the things that's most frustrating for Burkenos is when you're sitting there in traffic, you got the orange barrels and nothing is actually happening. We're going to try and eliminate that, at least on city projects. Again, this doesn't speak to projects on the freeway. You'd have to ask the state about that. We are also uh, going to do overnight work. Should be seriously considered whenever possible. It's actually better for our construction workers uh, and also much easier on traffic. So we're going to prioritize evening work. Also, when construction impacts uh, parking, contractors will provide other areas for community members to park. So we're asking our partners who do the construction to be cognizant of parking issues. That's something that has really slipped in the last few years. Also, all barricades uh, can only be in place one hour before construction and must be removed immediately once the project is completed. We've also noticed oftentimes there's a several day lag time between when construction starts or is going to start and when it's completed. So we're going to try and shorten that cycle again. So hopefully when you see orange barrels, at least on city roads, you're going to see construction. Those two things should always go together. And we are also instituting a fine for contractors who do not follow this of $500. These new changes, uh, I hope, will help make our city a much better place to get around. Obviously, as a western city with a heavy auto usage, we also want to emphasize folks' ability to bike and to walk and to take the bus. We're going to be talking about that next week in terms of new options, in terms of public transit. And so those are all ways that help reduce traffic on the roads. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our uh, county commissioner, Stephen Michael Casada, to talk about the county's efforts in this project from their perspective. Commissioner? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting uh, the county uh, to be a part of this uh, because it's, it's, it's crucial to everybody in Albuquerque as well as Bernalillo County. Um, we're making a great step forward in creating this regional traffic management center. Uh, in various places around Bernalillo County, the need for this uh, regional center is very apparent. Um, I live on 98th and Tower. Um, anytime there's even a fender bender or, uh, or anything from that uh, moving up, um, we become a standstill part of the city. And I think that's apparent for anybody who lives on the west side of Albuquerque. Um, and so this is a very important step forward to figuring out how we deal with this problem. Um, all the way from Rio Bravo, Broadway, uh, many intersections along Coors Boulevard, Tramway Boulevard, multiple agencies are involved. Um, first responders from the county and the city, and when accidents happen on the state road, it's the New Mexico uh, DOT is also involved. Sometimes tribal officers are involved, depending on where the issue could be taking place. Large um, incidents along these streets have been adverse effects on county and city traffic patterns with huge delays that sometimes create road rage, even more accidents. Um, Besides the Sheriff's Office, Bernalillo County's presence in the facility will also include our traffic operations group who maintain and service all traffic signals in the unincorporated areas of the county outside the Albuquerque city limits. 
having all these agencies in the same location ready to work together is what we need to be doing to better how we look at traffic in the metro area. So this is going to be a huge help to the residents and to the drivers and the pedestrians and to the bikes and to the buses. Um, so no matter what you get on, how things are flowing affects everybody. So this is important for Bernalillo County as well as the city as well as the state. And so thank you so much for bringing this together, making this happen. Um, and now I will hand it over to the people who actually are the boots on the ground. I want to introduce our under sheriff, uh, under sheriff Mora, please. Good afternoon. Uh, a lot of you may be ask, uh, asking, you know, law enforcement and how this affects. You know, I've been in law enforcement over 25 years, and I've always said this. Here we are, we fight uh, organized crime with unorganized law enforcement. And I'm, I'm happy to say that with the uh, mayor's uh, leadership, uh, we have a, a huge collaboration with the city and the county right now, and we're extremely excited about this. Um, this has been a, a long time coming. Our traffic unit and our DWI unit will be housed out of this location. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of dynamics when it comes to uh, unforeseen incidents, uh, traffic fatalities, things that cause roads to be shut down for long periods of time. This uh, center is going to allow us to be able to coordinate and collaborate with our other partners in law enforcement to ma make what's best for the, for the citizen out there. At the end of the day, citizens don't care who shows up and how things get solved. At the end of the day, we're all wearing the same hat. They see government, they see law enforcement, they don't care what patch you're wearing, what uniform you're wearing. So we're extremely excited about this with the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office, and uh, we look forward to great things coming. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. I was going to promote you to sheriff, but... <laughs> Um, hello, my name is Ken Murphy. I'm the District 3 engineer um, for the Albuquerque area and surrounding area in uh, Valencia and uh, Sandoval County. Um, thank you, Under Sheriff. Um, and I'd also like to express appreciation for partnerships with Federal Highway Administration, City, County staff, NMDOT staff, and especially law enforcement and first responder um, personnel. Um, in particular, I know. Our DOT staff with Charles Remkes and Tim Brown have been working hard on this effort with the city and then every day our dispatchers and courtesy patrol drivers and highway maintainers are out there on the road risking their lives too to keep traffic moving. Um, surprisingly, I looked up and Albuquerque is the 32nd largest urban area by population in the country. But as good as we do with managing our traffic and handling inc incidents, we're not even in the top 100 as far as congestion. So that says a lot about the great work people do in this area. This regional traffic management center can be used by multiple jurisdictions and response teams to maintain and improve mobility and worker safety during incident management. And I emphasize worker safety a lot because just last week we had an incident where one of our workers got hurt very badly, three more were in the way, and then two others in vehicles got hurt. So when we have eyes out there looking from elsewhere to keep people on track and know what the hazards are, that's very helpful. The intent of this co-located facility is tied back to its concept of operations, to better manage congestion and closures associated with incidents and peak period travel on interstates and state highways, and also major county and city streets. Participation in the RTMC will allow agencies to acquire and share information, services, and resources across jurisdictional boundaries to allow safer responses and faster clearances. Um, a coordinated incident response and transporta transportation management effort will help reduce traffic queues, improve safety for responders and motorists, reduce likelihood of second accidents and improve scene management to accommodate quicker clearances. And the multi-agency co-location accommodates interagency coordination and cooperation to include developing protocols for consistency in response to incidents. And it also allows for timely and accurate public information about traffic incident response and traffic conditions in the area. 
Also providing situational awareness to emergency responders by use of city, county, state, and DOT video images and allows corridor management to route traffic to an ideal um, efficient route when there's a holdup with an incident. And then also allows sharing of transportation operations resources such as dyna dynamic message signs and traffic signal control. Co-located facilities are recognized as a best practice in US DOT research with the benefits of reduced shared costs and broader awareness of partner agency actions and capabilities. Um, I'd like to give you a stat about Florida. Um, their reduced roadway clearance times were reduced by 11% and most of that was contributed to just to having a co-located team at their TMC. And finally, um, this joint TMC is in line with FHWA's everyday counts <laughs> objectives. The two of those being improved traffic accident traffic incident management and improve system management around work zones. Um, right now, um, I'm done. I'd like to turn it over to our Executive Director for Mid-Region Council of Governments, Mr. Dewey Kay. Thank you, Ken, um, and welcome everybody this afternoon. Um, first off, I want to thank uh, Mayor Keller for the opportunity to be part of this announcement for this RFP to continue uh, the new uh, Regional Traffic Management Center. Um, I'm glad that you are making this a priority, and hopefully we will finish this project under your, under your administration, because it's a very, very valuable project. Uh, the New Mexico Department of Transportation um, operates an existing facility out of our building in the downtown area. M many of you may have not have known this. It's down in our, in our basement. And I've really seen the magnitude of what it can do to keep traffic flowing smoothly on our roadways, especially the interstates, which you're addressing right now. And it's not only here in Albuquerque, but throughout the state. Um, but let me just say that in addition to the benefits that continuous communication will bring and better response times to traffic mishaps, this is truly the first time we're really looking at marrying the duties of those responsible for traffic operations with the duties of those responsible for responding to roadway incidents. Imagine a day when instead of one agency having to pick up a phone to call another and tell them about a traffic incident, that they may simply just turn their chair, look across the room, and the person they need to talk to is right there. Can you imagine the time that will be saved in, in, in you know, solving these particular incidents? That's what this is all about, Oper operating traffic signals, better uh, communication with first responders, better response to traffic mishaps, as well as we weather-related issues, all under one roof. All of this adds up to the benefit to our citizens, uh, in not only here in Albuquerque, but the entire region. I envision that this system will one day allow us to retime signals in the event of a traffic issue, and address problems in a localized manner to get motorists rerouted in real time and not be stuck waiting hours for the incident to be cleared. Uh, what, a, what an opportunity this is. That day is now closer because of today's announcement, so I want to again thank Mayor uh, Keller as well as the city for their efforts to continue this project and also the continued efforts of the NMDOT, Bernalillo County, Rio Rancho, uh, the Federal Highway Administration, as well as the New Mexico State Police. We need communication and, and cooperation from all of these entities to make this a success. So as we move forward, realizing this truly collaborative effort uh, that will serve citizens of this region, uh, this is a project that can really uh, make a difference. So thank you all for being here. <laughs> 